let's get underway. Uh, as you as you may or may not know, we have two public aquariums here in Los Angeles. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with Long Beach Aquarium of the Pacific, and you may or may not be familiar with the California Science Center, which is over in Exposition Park, uh, more or less next to the Coliseum. And they also, as part of the Science Center, as well as having the world's best collection of space capsules, and many have gone into space, uh, <laughs> including a shuttle, um, but they've got a great, uh, a great uh, place to dive there. And uh, they have a volunteer diving program. And so uh, as uh, they are gearing back up, well, I'm assuming they're gearing back up again, as, as we are at, in Long Beach, but gearing back up again to uh, sort of restaff volunteer divers as pandemic regulations and the restrictions ease, uh, we thought it was entirely appropriate to have them come uh, talk with you tonight and explain the program and what goes on and how you dive there and if you want to join, what you can do and blah, 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 blah. So uh, in charge of the blah, 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 blah tonight, <laughs> John Eckley, who is um, an assistant dive safety officer, aka ADSO. It's not a DSO. That's the whole title, ADSO. Uh, assistant dive safety officer over there at the uh, California Science Center. And he's going to regale you with uh, tales and slides and all kinds of stuff about what the program is all about. So please give a, a warm Zoom Seekers welcome to Sean Eckley. Thank you, Ken. Just pretend you can hear the applause in your, in your head. I, I, I pretend and I hear it. And, you know, uh, I don't know how to follow up after that wonderful introduction, um, but I'm going to try. We'll figure it out. Fair right. enough. Can uh, do this here. All right. Can everyone see uh, the PowerPoint? Yes, right. hopefully. Um, so uh, like Ken said, uh, my name is Sean Eckley. I'm one of the ADSOs at the California Science Center. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with the uh, AOP dive program, um, Andrew Solomon is our um, head DSO, uh, formerly worked there as well under Paul. Um, and a lot of you guys, uh, there's a fair amount of you guys that um, know Andrew. You might also know some of our volunteers because some of them are here. Um, but it's a really great program. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about our volunteer dive program and a little bit about the Science Center today. Um, just to kind of give you guys an idea of what goes on at our facility. So uh, the California Science Center, its mission is to inspire, uh, or as we aspire to stimulate curiosity and inspire science learning in everyone by creating fun, memorable experiences because we value science as an indispensable tool for understanding our world, accessibility and inclusiveness and enriching people's lives. Now, the Science Center, if you guys have been there before, is a myriad of different things, right? I, I always like to say it's kind of a lot like California, uh, the Cal Academy of Sciences up in San Francisco, if you've been up there, where they have different types of uh, science uh, being demonstrated. Um, our focus really, uh, one aspect that we, we have, obviously, is the space shuttle, um, the Endeavor, as well as all of the um, space capsules. On display, but we also have a huge, huge uh, collection of animals as a part of our ecosystems exhibits, um, which is where our dive program primarily runs in. Um, I like to always give the, the California Science mission statement uh, as a beginning of this talk, just because it really is uh, what makes the Science Center such a fun place to be in, to work and to volunteer at. Um, despite the fact that how long-winded our <laughs> mission statement is. I couldn't tell you it right off the, off the top of my head if I wanted to. Um, I think Jarrett might know it by heart, but that's about it. Um, <laughs> um, but it really does kind of uh, showcase that what we're about is trying to create that science learning and that engagement with the public. Um, as you can see there with our diver um, interacting with those little scientists, as we call them. No, oh, that, hold on one sec. Ah, oh, there we go. Moved on to the next one. I'm not the best at technology, so thank you for bearing with me. Um, the Sci California Science Center, uh, if you've been down there, it is an expo park right across from the Coliseum. Uh, it was formerly actually the uh, Museum of Science and Industry. That's a lot of what we do have in what we call the phase one of the building or the first portion of the building when you enter is, is a lot of that old science and industry um, exhibits and stuff kind of re repurposed, revamped um, into that section. Um, that uh, exhibit though, or that museum uh, 
in the late 90s was kind of revamped and turned into uh, the California Science Center we know today. Um, and so it reopened its doors in uh, 1998. Um, at the time, uh, I don't believe it is at this moment, but um, pre-pandemic, uh, it actually was one of the most visited uh, museums. Uh, it's second most in the country and the first most visited museum in the whole state of California. Um, like I said, we are uh, just like every other institution, slowly getting ourselves back up to normal speeds. We're starting to see all those wonderful school groups coming back in to explore the, uh, the Science Center, as well as getting a lot of events and stuff going in the evening. So it's great to, to see that. Um, we are home to the Space Shuttle Endeavor. So if you are uh, not just an underwater nerd like myself, but also a space nerd, it's a wonderful place for all that, all that stuff as well. And the, one of the cool things about the Science Center is that as a museum, all the permanent ex exhibits and galleries are free to the public. Um, even right now, uh, we do, I believe, still have timed reservations, but that reservation is, uh, is free for you to sign up unless you, I think, do the online one, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but in any case, uh, that's one of our, our selling points. The only thing that when you come to the Science Center that you pay for um, is a special exhibit, right? Um, and just to give everyone uh, in the Science Center a little shout out, right now we have our Angkor exhibit, um, which is all about um, ancient Cambodia. It's a really cool, fascinating exhibit. So uh, stop on by and see that. So that's more or less the Science Center as in, in general. Um, the most that I'll detail I'll go into it for right now. Um, but like I said, we have a whole uh, exhibit called Ecosystems, which the focus is to gear towards different environments that you would find different animals in life. Um, anywhere from our kelp forest exhibit to desert to even LA zone um, has a unique biome and a unique uh, array of life that you would find in those areas. So that's really what it's geared towards. Um, that uh, Ecosystems Gallery is basically falls under the Living Collections Department which is the department that the dive program uh, runs under. And we have our own mission statement that we kind of pare down from that Science Center mission statement uh, really to, to showcase what we're there for, um, which is we are there to provide excellent welfare for our living collections, conduct relevant and meaningful research and conservation and offer engaging experiences to inspire guests to learn about animal care and conservation. Just like any institution that has live animals, uh, we are um, really, really keen on making sure that all of our animals have not only the best animal welfare and care, but provide as much stimulation as possible for them and interaction for the public to learn about these wonderful animals. Um, uh, the uh, one thing too, to note about uh, the living collections and the ecosystem exhibits, it is one of the newer, uh, um, areas of the Science Center and the permanent exhibit world, um, and in fact was only open in 2010. So we're only about a little over two years uh, old, or not two years, sorry, 12 years old. Um, and we have a blend of nearly 400 different species of plants and animals uh, in our exhibits. We have both terrestrial and aquatic animals. Um, and a good portion of it, we try to make as hands-on as possible for our exhibits uh, or for our guests. Um, and we we track through 11 different environments. The big one, which is really what we focus on here in the dive program is our 188,000 gallon kelp forest exhibit, which has roughly 45 different species of animals in it, both predator and prey. And in fact, that photo that you see right there, that is a photo of our main uh, window gallery. And as you can see, we do have live kelp along with a myriad of different species of rockfish, surf perch, um, as well as a couple giant sea bass um, and the like inside. One fun fact that we have about our, our kelp forest exhibit is that we are a closed system exhibit. So we don't have direct access to the ocean for any of our water. However, because even though we are a closed system exhibit because of all the live kelp we have, um, we actually have recorded and are working on trying to keep live kelp growing naturally in our environment. 
So everything that you see there in the photo that's on the walls, all the red algae and the green algae are all naturally growing and, and formed on itself um, inside of our exhibit. Um, we are also an accredited member of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. We just went through our accreditation process again this last year um, to renew it. Um, and that's, you, that's a really big thing for us to have because that shows a level of care and um, concern for animal welfare and also conservation and research. Um, some other research projects that we currently are involved in, uh, we are currently hosting white abalone um, as part of the white abalone project um, out of Bodega Bay um, with the intent that in the future um, we'll hopefully be a part of that reproductive um, program so that way we can help repopulate white abalones out in the ocean. We've also done things with Reef Check as well as um, Catalina Marine Society, among others, uh, to do our ocean research and collections um, to better uh, help for conservation, but also care for our animals. All right, I like puns, so hopefully you all do too. Um, but if you, uh, if you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so Making Waves in Los Angeles, uh, our volunteer dive program has been active pretty much since uh, our doors have been open for the ecosystems. In fact, a little bit before that even, um, we had to have a couple of uh, volunteers as well to help start the process and get the animals in and do all that sort. Um, so the dive program has been active for over 10 years. And we do have some longtime volunteers that have been there almost longer than the majority of our uh, staff now. Um, some of those volunteers uh, could be like Susie Horowitz, who does volunteer with us, and she's been here with us for almost since the very beginning when we opened our, our uh, doors for it. Um, and Jarrett has been there for, well, I'll let Jarrett tell later on, but I think he's been there for at least five years or more. Um, in 2021, um, uh, we started re, uh, returning all of our, our volunteers, uh, and we had about 39 active volunteers return to our program then, uh, or sorry, active divers. 25 of those were dive volunteers at the time, um, but we still had a ton of diving to do. We did over 2,000 dives on scuba, um, over 180 <clears throat> dives on hookah, dive, uh, hookah diving and spent uh, just over 1500 hours underwater. Now, obviously 21 was a much shorter year than normal. Uh, Pre-pandemic, uh, we had about 45 to 50 volunteers. Um, and that number was around uh, 4,000 to 6,000 dives a year. But you can still see how much uh, diving we do, even though we have such a limited number of volunteers at the moment. Um, so we're really grateful for all the help and that our volunteers have put in for us, um, especially as we're bringing everyone back. <clears throat> so our dive vo uh, volunteer program, uh, obviously pre-pandemic was a, a bigger program. Uh, the, the pandemic itself, I will admit, has uh, how it had us revisit some of the, uh, the aspects of our program. Uh, and trying to make sure that we are doing the best for the animals as well as all the volunteers and staff that are working for us. Um, so a little bit about our dive pro program. Uh, we've switched our, our uh, volunteer shifts to full day shifts um, from eight to five with about an hour lunch break in between. Um, and that has predominantly to do with the fact that we're trying to make our, our shifts more of task oriented. Um, so that when you volunteer, you do the tasks that are, are asked of you. And then when, when those tax, tasks are completed, we let every, our volunteers out for the day. Um, that change has helped us out greatly in, in both uh, our capacity for what, the, what we're doing and also how all of our stuff had to, had to shift because of the pandemic. Um, our uh, volunteer dive, uh, divers are responsible for the most of the diving that happens in our exhibits. Um, any per shift, we may do anything from cleaning the exhibit as normal uh, and feeding a myriad of animals. We have about 15, I believe, different feeding groups that we feed, and majority of those are fed by our volunteers, as well as educational dive pre uh, presentations. Um, 
we also work very closely with our aquatics department. Um, so if you'd volunteer with us, you get an opportunity to learn a lot about uh, animal husbandry, especially aquatic animal husbandry, um, and interact with them on a daily basis, uh, as well as participating in other unique possible tasks that we might have. We do have a couple quarantine holding tanks, as well as a reef tank, uh, a smaller reef tank that we do um, dive in and work in. Uh, and so there's always opportunities for working in those environments a little bit as well. Um, we also have a scientific diver program, um, and that program is geared towards our volunteers as much as well. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more here in just a moment, um, but that is a one perk of, of volunteering for us. Um, and we also are always constantly working for um, new collaborations and various conservation nonprofits. Uh, recently, this last year, our staff was able to uh, partner with the um, I want to say it was the snowy plover um, rescue. Um, I don't, I might be, no, the elegant turns um, rescue for the, around the hatchery time, um, as well as partnering with Natural History Museum for some uh, research uh, and collections that they've needed to do as well. As a dive volunteer, uh, one of the fun parts about it is that you guys don't, don't have to provide any gear if you came and volunteered for us. We provide all of it as far as part of our uh, operations, um, both for cross-contamination purposes, but also for ease and convenience for you guys. Um, the only thing obviously we don't have for everyone is a half mask, um, because half mask, as we all know, is pretty personal to our individual diving styles. Um, but as you can see, there is a ton of, of gear available for you guys to use when you're here, when you would be at the Science Center. And give me one second here, trying to, all right. One of our biggest things as well is working on fish identification and education about the animals that we have in our exhibits because that directly ties into our uh, presentations and shows that we provide. Um, for those that are, are out there and dive primarily in Southern California, these are some of the species you might see. Um, I know a lot of these species myself, I've seen uh, if I've gone up down up the coast a little ways to Monterey. Um, uh, but we work on trying to help you guys identify the differences between different animals, as well as understanding their, uh, a little bit more about them as a species to educate the public about that, inf uh, about that information in that animal so that we can inspire that science learning. Um, and just so everyone kind of guesses, um, these two on the, on the, if you're looking at it, the two left fish are in fact two different species. Um, Garibaldi, I'd guess Garibaldi. <laughs> Not quite that, that Garibaldi. Um, these are all species of rockfish. Um, and, uh, if you guys can, uh, pick and choose between the two, and if you know which one it is, uh, you can go ahead and put that in the chat for, um, uh, Ken to look at, uh, but, uh, we do have a bunch of different species of rockfish, um, and are, all have a unique, uh, behavior and, and, uh, patterning to them. And hopefully kids, you know, Garibaldi are not rockfish, just to be clear. <laughs> We do a lot of continuing education for our dive volunteers as well. Um, and one of those continuing education aspects is full face mask. Um, for those that have volunteered in other aquariums, uh, you might have already done full face mask. And if not, full face mask diving can be a very uh, beneficial form of diving, um, especially when you're on a scuba rig in colder water. Um, primarily we do full face masks, obviously for our dive presentations. Um, but we also have full face masks for our volunteers to use inside of our exhibit. Now our exhibit is a kelp forest exhibit, and I didn't mention this quite earlier, but the, our exhibit, we do keep it at a nice toasty 56 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so wearing a full face mask for a lot of the diving that we do does help with that warmth a little bit, as well as giving a, a new skill set for you as a diver. Um, and that's something that we'll, we train a little ways into an active volunteer 
um, ism for each individual. We also focus a lot on dive safety and rescue drills. Um, I know that usually when I do these talks, a lot of people haven't done a rescue drill in quite some time. Um, I believe Jarrett has done one recently, um, if I'm not mistaken, only because I think I was the one there for it. Um, but um, <clears throat> we do require for our volunteers to participate in a dive rescue drill annually. But it is a great opportunity for you to test your skills, to um, keep up on it, get, provide, get uh, feedback provided to you. Um, to make sure that you guys are still up to speed and, and confident in your skills should something happen, even if you're going out recreationally diving or diving um, inside of our exhibit, you have that confidence that you can do provide the best care uh, for your dive buddy in that kind of scenario. There it is. And lastly, our big continuing education that we do is we do have an AUS scientific diver course. Now, uh, on that note, before I go into a little bit more about the actual course itself, um, right now we are in the process of restarting that, that course. Uh, Thomas, uh, one of the other ADSOs that works with me, um, is the one in charge of setting up and running our scientific diver program. Um, and he's currently working on building, building the class up again, so that way we can start offering it again in the coming year. Um, so it is a great opportunity. It's something that we offer for our dive volunteers. As long as they've been in good standing uh, and met our minimum requirements for one year. Um, it's an extensive course that involves a lot of good dive training. A um, lo lot of learning, including diving science, diving physiology, and diving physics. As well as opportunities to do a night dive, blue water diving, and chamber dive. Um, we all know chamber day is coming up. Um, and it's a great thing to have that chamber off the coast here for us, should we need it. Um, and one of the aspects that we've done before is actually taking our scientific divers out and did a chamber dive down to 160 feet. Um, it's a really good experience just to kind of get an idea of what that, that experience is like actually going down that deep and working your stops up. Um, as well as being a scientific diver for us, we do uh, train in reef check as a part of that training. Um, and some projects that we're currently working on is the uh, thermographic array, which is through the Catalina Marine Society, um, as well as we are in charge of two reef check uh, survey sites, um, as well as a myriad of different collections that we go on. Um, predominantly, we go out to collect kelp at the moment, but we do always look for other opportunities. In fact, I recently did a, a collection dive um, a couple weeks ago uh, in, I think is Alameda Bay. Very fun. Um, definitely muck diving, but, uh, picking all the wonderful little inverts that you can find in there. Um, it's fascinating to know what, what is actually there right underneath of our feet. Um, so if you are a scientific diver or you're, you're interested in scientific diving and learning more about that, uh, come volunteer with us. Uh, it is a possibility that we'll get you on there and get you into that program. And it's a lot of fun. So volunteering with the porpoise, there's my other, one of my other puns. Um, you know, really, I take this as an opportunity to, uh, to let you guys know why it's always a good opportunity to volunteer for your uh, institution or for uh, an aquarium or zoo. Um, but specifically for us, I, it's really a great opportunity for you guys who have that passion of scuba diving in, in the underwater environment and the marine environment to promote science learning for all the guests, young and old. Um, I've had many, many times when I've been just working with one of our divers in the water um, and they're training on one of the feeds and I have a, a, a family come up and ask me what's going on and kind of learning a little bit more about the actual animals and life, uh, life cycles and the habit, habitat that we have, which is a great, it just, it's one, what a, a wonderful feeling. Um, you also have an opportunity to share your knowledge and passion. You guys are all full of a wonderful knowledge about diving and about marine life, especially in Southern California and around the world. And it's always an opportunity to share that passion with others. You can gain a lot of good, good skills and experiences um, by volunteering. Um, and for those who don't have too many opportunities to dive, 
you get to uh, keep the uh, fresh on those skills and actually get more opportunities to dive and be in the water. Um, you get to make a lot of new friends, uh, as you can tell from Jarrett being here and Andrea being here. Um, our our uh, volunteer pool is extensive. We have volunteers from all different dive clubs and dive shops um, that come and help us out, as well as the university systems around here. It's also a great way to give back to the community um, and become a citizen scientist for our oceans. I, uh, you know, my passion for marine biology and and scuba is what got me into the field that I am I'm in right now, and I really try to use this as an opportunity to really educate others and hopefully inspire them to to learn more about the ocean and care a little bit more for those our ocean environment. So important days to know. Um, normally, uh, how our process works for onboarding. Um, is we have an information and interview. It's just an opportunity for us to give you more information about our program if you are in, interested in becoming a volunteer, um, as well as a skills pool evaluation, where we do we have a swim test and a scuba test. It's really an opportunity for you to just get in the pool and for us to see where your level is at so that way we can make sure that you are going to um, be safe and comfortable while diving in our exhibit. Um, for those who have dove in an aquarium, you know how being in an actual aquarium environment differs a lot from the ocean in that even though it looks very large, it tends to be a little bit smaller once you actually get in there. Um, at the moment, we don't have any dates for our next cycle um, because we have just started the onboarding process again. Um, so last year, we focused on returning all of our, our previous volunteers and active volunteers. And this year we started the onboarding and recruitment process and currently in the middle way of our first cycle of that. Um, because it's our first time doing it since pre-pandemic, we're kind of working out the kinks and all that. So if you are interested, you can always contact myself, um, email me or uh, Michelle Adams, our volunteer coordinator, so we can start giving you that information once we have that. But to be determined, we're looking at somewhere maybe in uh, late summer, early fall for our next cycle, once we get through this first cycle here and kind of see how everything plays out. Um, so that's kind of the, the short of it. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, my one last pun for everybody. Um, I now would let the, like to take this as an opportunity, Ken, if it's possible for uh, I, Andrea and Jarrett to just kind of share their experiences of volunteers here at the California Science Center. Um, they are, are great volunteers for us. Um, right now, Andrea has been helping out our aquatics staff in the interim, and Jarrett, I think, was just in this last weekend. So, Well, I mean, that's fine. I'll have to bill you for that. I hope that's okay. I mean, you know, hopefully that bill is zero. <laughs> well, I didn't tell you how much it was going to be. Absolutely. Who, who, who would you like to go first? And, uh, uh, I'll just point out Bromley is also on the call now. I see so. Bromley as well. Yeah. Ah, well, then I didn't see Bromley's name. He's not, he's like low, low down on my list. So he doesn't have his, Bromley. he doesn't have his video turned on. So that may be why you're not seeing him on your screen, Sean. Gotcha. Yeah. I just see his name now. Hi, Bromley. <laughs> um, and Sean, why don't you, uh, unless anyone still needs the, the screen up, why don't you stop the share screen? Okay. That way uh, they'll, they'll appear bigger. Andrea, since you jumped in, why don't you uh, why don't you start off and okay. can uh, relay your experience, even though obviously since you did not actually go change into logo gear, you will be dismissed from the program tomorrow. Um, but uh, but yeah, go go ahead and try to try to save your volunteer position. Well, they've, they've already got me halfway out the door. No, okay. seriously. Um, I can't say enough good things about diving at the Science Center. It was actually Bromley that gave me a heads up a few years ago that the program existed. And uh, for me, living in Silver Lake, it's much closer than going down to AOP. And um, once I got there, I just found out what a great program it is. The dive staff is wonderful to work with, very professional, very knowledgeable, and I feel as a volunteer, you get a tremendous amount of respect and appreciation for the work that you do. Uh, definitely feel appreciated for the time that we spend there. And very focused on safety, which is something I, I really value. Um, I currently am on medical leave from the dive program and um, they've been able to accommodate me to work on the uh, uh, 
aquatic side, okay, okay. which has been wonderful. And uh, one other thing I just wanted to touch on, um, you get great opportunities to work with the Aquarius and the veterinarian and any number of other people as a dive volunteer. So it's not just go in and clean great, acrylic. Okay. You're, you're learning about you know, various aspects of the operations by working with the people there, which is, is really enriching. I love it. Okay. Cool. I'll shut up. Oh, I, I doubt that seriously, but that's very, <laughs> no, it's very nice. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, Andrea has been doing a great job. Uh, we've been able to, to keep her on and, and move her into one of the other living collections, volunteer positions. And that's always an opportunity as well for you guys. I mean, I'm here primarily for the dive program. But volunteers are really what make our program and our living collection department be able to run it and do. And you get to learn a lot of different uh, skill sets. And we love to share. I mean, as Andrew was pointing out, the aquarists, um, you get to interact with them a lot. One of our senior aquarists, Cora, which is the one who runs our, our who's the primary or oversees our kelp forest exhibit on top, is uh, a wealth of knowledge and also loves to talk about it. So if you ask a question, just Take a seat and you'll be there a while. <laughs> nothing wrong with nothing wrong with that. Jarrett, you want to chime in next and then we'll get to Bromley. Sure. Um, so I, I've been a volunteer, I, I think since either 2014 or 15. So it's I'm, I guess I'm approaching like seven years in that ballpark. Um, uh, yeah, I've I've enjoyed it immensely. I've learned a lot. Um, uh, working with the staff that they serve as also, uh, they're great educators and they're great role models. I, I, I um, took my dive master program because I was kind of inspired by, um, by having great role models as, as ADSOs uh, um, at the Science Center. Um, I also um, got my AAUS certification uh, through the Science Center. And that was also a great experience, team building experience. I mean, it was like really intense. And, you know, you really had to kind of, you know, get to know the, the, the really get to know the, your, your fellow classmates in the class. And that was a, a really um, uh, great experience as well. Um, and then uh, just uh, mirroring off of what, what Andrea says, as far as learning about, you know, other things and safety, uh, lots of safety. I'm, uh, I, I quite like the rescue drills. You, you know, you, you know, even though they uh, are a bit of a challenge, I, I, um, um, I, I find it kind of refreshing to 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 know that I've, I uh, am able to practice those skills and know that that uh, um, um, if something sh should happen, um, I, I've I've got something to to kind of go on. Um, from having those drills annually. So uh, that's another good thing as well. Um, and that's really all I got to say. <clears throat> cool. Uh, before we get to Bromley, uh, for those of you who are old enough to have done drugs when you were younger, younger, if you're watching Andrea's thing right now and you see Wendy going in and out because she's leaning back, leaning forward, and Andrea's the same way, you are not having an LSD flashback. It's just bad lighting on their part. We'll, we'll talk about that. Wendy, lean forward a little bit. Just like, there you go. Oh, and then Andrea goes away. So maybe it is an LSD flashback. I was wrong. Or it's surface narcosis. Bromley, you're up. You need to uh, unmute yourself, Bromley. There All you right. go. Yeah, so I, I was trying to keep track of that. I was driving, so not too smart to have the video on for that. Uh, that's um, a good point. Good point. Yeah. But uh, yeah, to add to what everyone else has said, it, it's um, been seven years since I joined the program, I think, and it's been a great experience, great learning curve. Um, and to add to what, um, you know, Jarrett was saying about the skills, really, you know, you want to learn buoyancy and sort of working in a small confined space. You, you learn a lot getting in the water that regularly and having to work in that sort of environment. And for me, one of the fun things, apart from, you know, the animals, all the other interactions with the uh, divers and the staff there it is really the education program where you're working with the visitors that's obviously been constrained with covid but uh, you know uh, as well as the actual presentations we give and the q a sessions there's an area where you suit up and um, you know it's great talking with the kids who've never seen a scuba diver up close 
and a lot of them just don't realize what's off the shore of Southern California. So, you know, it's a really great experience in party and sharing that knowledge. And, and one great advantage you guys have over where we are at the Aquarium of the Pacific is you do have that public interaction where you're going in and gearing up that we don't, uh, you know, that we don't get too often. So, uh, yeah, it is there. It's amazing. It always amazed me. I, I've been diving in other public aquariums. I've been in an aquarium in Shanghai. I've been to the Epcot and a couple of others. And it's amazing to me how jazzed people get just when they see you and they realize, oh, that's a live person. And let alone they can talk to you about it. And it's a, yeah, it's a very, a very cool, cool thing to say the least. So very good. Who else has some questions for anybody? You can either, for those of you who don't have your video on, you'll have to use the hand raise thing. Or for those of you who have your video on, you can physically raise your hand. And Bromley, I realize you're, you're muting yourself. You're not raising your hand to ask a question on top of all. Rachel's got a question. You got to unmute. There you go. Um, Sean, I don't know if I missed it, but is there a... Um... Like, what is the minimum time commitment? I don't, I don't remember if you said that during your presentation. Yeah, I, uh, it might have gotten missed here. Hold on one sec. Let me check my slide here because we do, I do have that section and it looks like I accidentally skipped through that slide. Huh. You want to call the slide back up and go over it, Sean? Yeah, I'm going to pull it up right now. Hi. I, uh, I, as you said, technical difficulties, it does happen to the best of us. Sometimes we're a walking technical difficulty. You never know. You can ask our volunteers how many things are going through my head every time that I'm uh, working. There we go. So if you guys can see the slide. Um, there you are. Okay. We do actually have um, the, the minimal uh, requirements to become a volunteer for you guys. Um, our initial commitment for all of our dive volunteers is one full year um, with uh, doing two full shifts um, a month uh, or six full days um, or shifts per quarter right on a quarter calendar year. Uh, one benefit that we do for our volunteers is that the shifts are set up by you guys. We have openings for two volunteers pretty much every day of the week. Um, and so if a Saturday and a Sunday, one month works for you, but it's not the same consistent every month, you're not on a set schedule. You get to schedule yourself throughout the month for the, uh, to meet that commitment as you guys see fit. Um, so it gives you guys a lot of range of flexibility to, to meet that commitment on that side. Um, to be, be a volunteer for us, obviously, it is uh, just a couple of things that we do have to do for the Science Center. Um, obviously, must be 18 years of age or older. Um, must be able to pass a live scan screening. Uh, the reason for that is the California Science Center Foundation is where the dive program actually is run out of. But the California Science Center itself is actually a state-run building um, and so anything that has to do with the state side we also have to be able to um, do live scan for that what, what is um, sean what is a live scan screening i really don't know live scan that's fingerprinting um oh, okay check kind of stuff background check. Um, yeah basically same you would do for any kind of local government uh entity um so that's kind of where the there's a little bit of a double life going on at the science center where one side is a, the state side and one is actually the nonprofit foundation side. And and what's your limit on how many felonies can you have committed before that, you can't join? That you'll have to ask our state, uh, our state, okay. department. but uh, I have no idea. I honestly, you know, I've never had anybody come back and uh, I think uh, they've come back and pretty much everybody's passed. I don't, I don't know of anybody that hasn't. I just get to say, okay, they're good. Okay, great. I'm taking them. You take them. That's right. Um, uh, you must be at least rescue uh, diver certification level um, or higher um, from nationally recognized scuba agency. Now a PADI, SSI, SDI um, proof of 50 log dives or more. Um, be current in first aid CPR, AD and O2 provider. Um, and on that note too, in my other slide, I might've had a, a slide that I skipped over um, on it, but one thing about being a volunteer is you come in with that current CPR first aid aid and you know too, but once you're a volunteer for us, we do our best to provide you guys with um, as much training and opportunity to keep up on all that stuff. So we provide uh, the DFA pro courses through Dan um, for all of our volunteers and staff free of charge to keep up on your, your certifications. Um, so if that's going to expire and you're a volunteer for us, we try to make sure to keep you guys up on that stuff. 
Um, must be able to pass confined water swim and scuba skills evaluation, which I talked about a little bit. Um, and as well as being able to pass a dive medical. Um, that's one of our standards that we have to meet for Cal OSHA. Um, the technical diving standard um, is that the uh, all divers at our institution must have an annual dive medical um, uh, to be continuing to dive in our program. Um, but the benefit to you guys is, is that we actually provide uh, that medical for you. Um, so we cover that cost for that dive medical. We have all the paper. Once you get to that section, we have a location, a memorial care down in um, Long Beach that does, uh, that works with us and does all of our dive medicals. Um, and so you get, if nothing else, if you volunteer annually, you get a free medical. It's a great, you know, great thing to add to your, uh, your healthcare a little bit. And, and the doctor who does them, Dr. Escobar is a graduate like I am of Northwestern university. So when we go in, we, we talk Northwestern more than we talk medical. So if you want to, if you want to suck up to him, if you get Juan Escobar to say, I understand you and Ken Curtis both went to Northwestern. And Pretty much who I see every time I go there. Is there you go. <laughs> so he's um, a good guy. Does that, does that help answer your question, Rachel? Rachel, awesome. oh, you were, I was going to say, Rachel, you were muted, if, but I saw the thumbs up. So what other, uh, Sean, unless you want to look for one of those other skip slides that we can say, yeah, end the share screen. Andrea's got a question. Yes. Uh, actually, I wanted to make another point uh, to try to recruit women. Um, one of the things that the kids are just fascinated by, the little girls, is when you come up from a dive and you're in the dive uh, diver's entry area and they see it's a female diver. The it's girls girl? are so excited. Yes, yeah. they automatically assume that all scuba divers are boys. And it really gets them very excited about, maybe I could do this. So I'll put that plug in for, for any women who might be interested. Not to put you on the spot, Sean, but you know what your ratio is male to female roughly? Uh, I do not off the top of my head, um, but I do know we have a... Um, a fair amount of uh, female divers. Uh, we have, well, we got Andrea, um, but we have. What more do you need? We got Susie. We have, um, yeah, we have a couple other ones that uh, that work uh, during the week. And we have about half of the new recruits that we're doing that are that are coming in this are, are all female as well. Um, so, uh, and, and to be honest, most of our, our husbandry staff is uh, female as well. It's, um, I think of our of our team left, we have pretty much evenly split on our aquatic staff of, of that kind of ratio. Yeah, it's uh, a similar thing at in Long Beach. I'd say we have almost 80 percent females on the husbandry staff. I'm not sure what our overall stuff is um, on the volunteer staff, but I'd say 30, 40 percent of the divers, volunteer divers are, are, are women. And in case you're wondering how that balances out with overall national stuff, you know, years ago when some of you got certified in me as well, it really was, you know, a man's sport. Um, but I, I would say now it's probably 60, 40, maybe even 50, 50 men and women were getting certified and that that's probably held for about the last 10 years or so. So a lot more, a lot more women coming into the sport. What other questions do we have? If any, I think, uh, Mark's got his, uh, hand up. Yeah, I got it. Oh yeah. Hi, hi, hi guys. So Ken, Ken, yes, do you do rescue certifications? Uh, I can, if need be. I generally don't, only because, you know, I just haven't for a while. But uh, the the advantage of, uh, for me now, I don't do anything that requires a pool or you know that I have to provide equipment. So it's it's doable. Let's put it that way. And let's put it this way: I'm authorized by Naui to conduct rescue classes. Okay. Because I, I don't have that, and I'm interested in the program too. Oh, you meant you? No, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> what? I, what? I mean, I, I you know I, I used to, but I had like five or six students die during the rescue class, and my attorney, you know, which is Rachel, said, you know, maybe Ken, you'd like to think about not doing these classes yeah, well, anymore. Well, well because hearing we, that, I don't. Hearing that, I never mind. Yeah, we can't afford to keep paying off the estate. Uh, no, man, that's something. We can set up, and, and the thing with the rescue class, in all seriousness, if, if it's something any any other ones you are interested in doing, a not to put in the pitch for me, we could certainly set it up. Those classes are more fun 
and I think more doable when you have five or six people and we can do them one-on-one, -on -one, but I think it's a much better learning opportunity. And, and it's like one of the things we go through, and I'm sure Sean, you guys go through as well is, you know, when you do a rescue class, if you're a small person, you look for another small person or this, and we say, you know, if we're doing this in the exhibits, Hey, you know, the 280 pound guy may be your buddy. And so let's see what's what and learn new things about how to move, move people around and stuff like that. So that's where it's, it's nice to have a number of, a number of people. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah. And um, I, I just saw uh, Laura, I saw your, your chat. Ah. Message. Um, sorry to cut you off there. Ken. No, no, that's fine. Uh, for anybody Don't ever that, do it again, Sean, but that's fine. I mean, I won't do it on chamber on chamber Eve. I okay. Won't fair that. enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, uh, for any of those that are interested in uh, being on our list for our next uh, round of, of onboarding for volunteers, um, those two email addresses down below at the bottom of it, if you can see, go ahead and jot those down, take a screenshot or, or take a photo of that. Um, Michelle Adams is our volunteer coordinator. Um, and then obviously that's my email as well for you guys to contact. You can email uh, her, me, or both of us. Um, and we will add you to our list. Um, when we get the information and we have the, the details more, Michelle is typically the one that con contacts our, our prospective volunteers first, um, just to get the ball rolling, um, with all the science center wide volunteering, um, information and stuff to kind of, kind of push that through. You can also go online to the California science center website. Um, and look under our volunteer opportunities page. There is a, an adult application um, for our ecos or for our living collection department, um, and that's basically specifically for our husbandry side or dive program and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's one aspect that you guys will have to do to, to start that anyway. And when you do that, that'll get sent off to our uh, volunteer coordinator and HR um, to start that process as well. So. But email Michelle and I uh, if you guys are interested and we can help get you get you rolling on that as well. And if you forget it or write it down wrong, email me and I can forward to them. So okay. not a problem at all. Any other, Glenn, you have a question. Um, I, I saw the hand. You're, you're yeah. like, where's Waldo there? I know. <laughs> uh, so uh, where do you do the pool work and the testing and so on? So the good thing is, is we have this wonderful... Uh, pool and institution across the street from us is that ucla usc oh usc the other one yes i mean you don't UCLA have is a little far for us i mean <laughs> yeah we actually just fly out to northwestern and there you and go take a weekend um no uh we uh, have thankfully have a good partnership with uh usc and as well as with, with the wrigley institute um we go to wrigley for our scientific diver program when we do that training um as a part of that among other couple locations around Southern California. But when we do our pool session, predominantly we've been going over to the USC PED pool, um, the indoor pool. Um, and we basically block it out for about a, a three hour time frame for the swim test, uh, as well as for all the, the scuba skills tests and all that stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, until such a time that uh, that pool is not available to us, it's, it's what we use um, for the most part. Cause it's nice. You get a meet at the science center. We load it all up in a science center truck, all the gear, we ship it over to, uh, over to the pool and we just walk on over across the street. Um, makes it really easy and convenient for everybody. Oh, I have a question. I'll bet nobody's thought about. Do you pay for parking? So that is a oh, great question. Um, as a dive volunteer, you get the awesome, sweet, badge that comes with all of the uh science center employees um that's also one reason why they do the uh the live scan because you do get badge access for all our card readers um but that badge doubles as your ticket in and out of the parking structure so when you're volunteering you don't have to pay for a thing um when you come for the pool session we also get those tickets comped for you um so you can go in and uh leave without having to pay for anything on that end um the only thing it doesn't allow is you to uh is you know, pay for parking for everybody else. Um, <laughs> um, Jared or Wendy, I'll, I'll need to borrow your badge for a day or so. To... It's not going to happen. Don't, don't, ask, <laughs> don't ask what you're going to do. <laughs>
Um, but yeah, so they, they just recently installed new um, kiosks for all the parking stuff, which is at least for our, our stuff has been a lot better than it previously was, which was really confusing. Um, it's still confusing, but I think that's basically any place that you have to pay for parking now. Um, and where do you park? Just that big surface lot. That's just, yeah. So there's Figueroa. I think they call it the blue lot. It's right next to Christmas tree lane. Um, yeah. uh, right, right across from the, the new, um, bank of America, uh, bank of America. No, no bank of, okay. bank of California stadium. Oh. And yeah. I'll see him. Um, we only ask that when you volunteer that we have park on the second, third, third or fourth floor um, and try to leave that top floor open for guests, easy access for them. But to be honest, I don't know about you. I don't like leaving my car out in the baking sun if I don't have to. Um, so it's really nice to go to a nice cool car after a hot day. Um, and in the summertime, not to sell it anymore, but if you're volunteering in the summertime, 56 degrees feels really, really good. Um, nice and refreshing. See, in the summertime at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we charge people to volunteer to be assigned to our Blue Cavern exhibit. So, Andrea, was that a hand up? Uh, yeah, I um, wanted to make sure we didn't sell short any of the, uh, the other benefits that come from volunteering at the Science Center in terms of being able to uh, get previews of special exhibits, uh, free access to the IMAX movie theater for the presentations there, um, let's see. Uh, it's a great volunteer jacket. Oh, um, yes. If you work enough hours, you get uh, various uh, volunteer swag. swag. You get swag. swag. Yeah, that's that's the way to put it. But um, you know, anytime you want to see the space shuttle or uh, uh, any other special exhibits, um, you can go into those. Well, there are some minor exceptions, but overwhelmingly, it's it's free to volunteers. You get a discount at the McDonald's that's that's inside the Science Center? Hey, there hasn't been a McDonald's in there since even when I started. <laughs> I was gonna say you can tell last time I was there. I think you, you do there. get it, you do get a discount at the at the Terranea, the food, the the what they do have for food, you do get a, a, a decent discount actually. It's a pretty yeah. good deal, it's like 20%. Yeah. And discount in the in the uh, discovery store as well. Cool. <laughs> Any other questions? You can tell how divers were talking about discounts and benefits. What can I get for free? I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. And as you guys can tell, I'm much better at just talking than I am giving a presentation myself. So if you do have questions, you were fine. Feel free to email me. I'm happy to answer it. Uh, Jarrett uh, Bromley and Andrea, Andrea can uh, attest that sometimes I can be long winded in my emails. But, you know, I try to cover all my bases and make sure I thoroughly answer any questions that you guys have. So. John, I don't care how long when did you may think you are in your emails. I guarantee you if they compared the two of us, you're probably going to be in second place. So I mean I, I'm not trying I'm not vying for first. Let me say well it's like it's like have I you, sent out I sent out a note Sean, today. have you seen within this week this week uh, reef seekers emails? That, exactly. I mean but it's like <laughs> I sent out a note I sent out a note today that we have tomorrow night, we have our first, what we call our stuffing party for chamber evening, where a bunch of people come here and we, you know, this is how you get the tickets in the mail and everything. And so I said, okay, what do you guys want to eat? Would you like pizza? Would you like fried chicken? Or would you like something else? And Susie Horowitz, one of your volunteers replied, yes. <laughs> I said, this is a multiple choice. Yes is not an answer. So. Sounds very Susie. <laughs> the, the, the other side of that is, I, and, and maybe brevity runs as, a, you know, some of a DSO trait, because this is a fight I have with the aquarium at all times. And one time they sent me a note, and I won't mention who sent it, but it was not Andrew, I'll tell you that. And the note said, can you come in and help with a film shoot on Friday or whatever it was? And I said, um, sure. What time? Oh, they said, be here at nine o'clock. I said, okay, fine. I show up at nine o'clock. And they go, the first thing they goes, well, where's your camera? I said, what do you mean, where's my camera? They said, well, how can we do the film shoot if you don't have your camera? I said, you asked me to come in and help with the film shoot. You didn't ask me to come in and do it. You didn't ask me to bring my camera. So brevity has its downside. And I'm with you, Sean. I'd rather be long-winded and accurate. So there's no question. And you think you learned things. You know, I said things you didn't need to know, but there's no questions in the end. Yep. 
Yep, okay. I'm with you on that. In fact, I'm there, the I'm there I with you. Told, I always get told, bring it back, tear it, pare it down. Well, Once you tell Andrew nice. he's wrong about that. <laughs> it's like people say, you send out too many emails. I said, does your computer lack a delete button? You know, so anyhow. Any other questions as we are wrapping up? It's no, John has a question. Hello, everybody. Hello, John. So, um, yes, anybody who needs to get their uh, their advanced or their rescue certification, I can help you with that. John as well. Maybe we'll even team teach. We haven't done that for years and years. So who knows? That would be awesome. Would be Best of both worlds. That way you can get a NAWI and a PADI certification. Oh, that's selling it. That is. That is. That's great. I've well, then, had Jonathan. Ken, Ken kills people, apparently. Yeah, that's right. Well, John, keep, John that's keeps... That's what I'm there for. John, yeah, exactly. John keeps me in line. So in all well, seriousness, if anyone's interested in doing that, you know, we can, we can set something up. And usually, um, uh, you know, it's not always my favorite training beach, but for rescue, it's great. Uh, Vets Park in Redondo, uh, now home of the... They've, according to Mark, they've taken out all the meters. Now there's a pay station in. So a little bit, I guess, e easier to... Uh, to pay for it How, what, what's the length of time the time limit on the pay station mark do you know say that again you know the length of time limit on the pay station what's the most time you can do on the pay station do you know uh no i'm assuming it's several oh, i'm sure it's many hours yeah i think it's a four hour limit I mean, yeah. that was a problem unless you brought a you know a brand new roll of quarters it was always hard in the good old days and i'm going back to way back into the like 90s they had a type of meter made by palm international so when you put the quarter in you know, you turn the dial turn the handle well if you turn the handle halfway and you took your hand and smacked it it gave you 30 minutes of time so you just sit there and smack it and smack it and smack it. and all of a sudden you had three hours worth of time it was great Bever the beverly hills meters were the same one that's how that's how i knew because the, the original meters in front of the store i don't know who but when I started teaching for Sunland Sports Lodge, it's the first thing they told me how to how to borrow time on the meters there. So anyhow, all the little secrets you learn by by attending these Zoom secret sessions. So let us thank Sean for the presentation tonight. Please remind you, um, as Sean mentioned, Chamber Day is May fourth, three weeks from tomorrow. God, um, and a week after that, a little less on May the. 10th, I guess it is seven plus. Yes. 10th. Um, we have, I'm not sure if it's going to be Mark Jabella or someone else from excess scuba. will be here to talk about the idea of just the industry from a manufacturer's um, standpoint. Um, you know, the way it works in general is manufacturers sell to dive retailers and then the retailers sell to you. And, and um, excess scuba is a, I guess you call them a consolidator. They don't necessarily make, a lot of their own stuff. They're not specifically manufacturing stuff, but they're dealing with other vendors who make things for them. And it's, it's an interesting thing, especially with supply chain problems. And especially since we'll be doing this talk right before the scuba show starts, which is May, I guess it's 14th and 15th. That's Saturday and Sunday. So uh, May is a nice busy month for all things scuba. So again, Sean, thank you very much. Thank uh, you everyone. I appreciate you uh, coming and listening to me chat for a little bit. And hopefully and again, if you got, all of you guys there. Yeah. Got any questions? Shoot them, shoot them a note or shoot me a note and I'll forward it to them. But for the meantime, we thank you very much for your rapt attention on uh, this edition of Zoom Seekers. And we will fondly wave goodbye and we hope to see you all next month. Thanks a lot, everybody.